In the news, we take our attention to Uganda, where its president, Yoweri Museveni, who has been in power for the last 34 years, is seeking to extend his tenure as he has expressed interest to run on the platform of the ruling party in the 2021 presidential election. Plus TV Africa correspondent Adebanke Odunui takes a look at the chances of this city-state leader. Yoweri Museveni became the president of Uganda in 1986 and has been the president till today. Now he plans on running again in the upcoming 2021 presidential election. In a bid to unseat the longtime ruler, Ugandan activist Bobby Wine has launched a new political party through which he plans on running for the office of the president next year. However, Kiza Bisiye, a longtime opposition leader, who has run for president since 2001 in the country, has announced that he will not run against Museveni next year, saying he will seek democratic change by other means. Also, the Ugandan People's Congress, UPC, has declared that it will not be fielding a candidate in the upcoming election. This will be the second time in a row that the UPC refuses to take a shot at the presidency. Jimmy Akena, president of the UPC had declined to run for presidency in 2016 general election. As the election draws near, many political analysts say it will be a miracle if Museveni is unseated. For Plus TV Africa, Adebanke Udunui. Thank you, Adebanke Udunui, for that uh, quick update. Now we have joining us from Uganda, Jackson Mesigwa, who is the national coordinator of the Under 40 Platform, a political pressure group mobilizing young people to fully participate in politics in Uganda. Thank you for being with us, Jackson. Thank you for having me, Amaka. Right. Now, President Yoweri Museveni has been in office since 19. 86, and a new generation of Ugandans have been calling for a political change in the upcoming 2021 elections. Is that change likely to happen, Jackson? Uh, well, uh, it depends. It's too early now to decide, actually, though uh, uh, we, we expect these elections, first of all, not to be free and fair due to the fact that they'll be scientific in nature. And you see, we, we are used to open campaigning. And so when you tell people to adopt to this model of election where people don't have to gather, people cannot be allowed to, you know, move freely and interact with the voters, uh, it makes this election quite complicated. But then getting back to your question, it's possible that this government can be changed in 2021. But then it will depend on how different political players, especially the opposition, organize themselves. As you stated it earlier, uh, uh, Dr. Vesti is not contesting again. He's a very big political figure here. He has been in this thing for almost now 20 years. And so you cannot put him out completely, though he's not contesting. Mm. Bobby Wine, though we may question his political experience and, and a few other things, he has motivated young people. He attracts a big, big, big group of young people who make 75% of the total voters. And so it will depend on how opposition organizes themselves on maybe forming coalitions. But then this is now, it's too early to tell if it will be possible. But then if opposition can front one candidate, now that the Dr. Vesti is out, UPC is not fronting a presidential candidate, I hope that Bob Wine can convince other political uh, opposition political leaders to join him, and then maybe we could make Museven fail to raise the 51 percent mm. in this election. All right. You, you mentioned there that you have 75 percent of uh, you know the young people engaging in politics. Uh, therefore, it looks like there's a shift already now. But this pattern of sitting tight in office is common. I mean, in Africa, like we said earlier, Yoweri is 34 years there as a, as a president. What do you think is responsible for this? If I may ask you. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's mostly because of the, the nature of our politics. Most of these leaders have come into power through military coups or through the power of the gun. So it's, it's not easy to, you know, push someone out of an office through an election if that person came in through military coup or, you know, undemocratic means. 
So it's, uh, it's, I think, because of that, that most of these African leaders, uh, you know, cling to power using military resources, I mean military means. For example, here in Uganda, President Museveni came in 1986 through, uh, 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 you know, through military means. So, yes, we may have elections, but, uh, you know, the, the, the influence of the army, the role of the army in these elections cannot be put out. And it's because of that that most of these leaders use these very officers to, you know, grip on power. And, and I believe that we need to change this trend and adopt to democratic systems so that we can have, you know, fair elections where people come in, you know, through democratic means. Right. All right, Jackson, uh, b b due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, Uganda's Electoral Commission has put forward a plan which you know, prohibits uh, most in-person campaigning. Instead, it's requiring that candidates rely most exclusively on media outlets to pitch themselves to voters. How effective do you think uh, this campaigning method will be? Uh, most, most opposition candidates have, have been protesting this you know, kind of uh, campaigning. Mm. Because, uh, as I said earlier, if you're not allowing people to meet, and, you know, there are so many factors that really determine people's decision in an election. They need to interact with the candidates. They need to, you know, see the candidates physically. So when you tell people to only campaign scientifically, it, it doesn't work out. But, mm. you know, as... I told you that the president is free in charge, he's the one who controls the electoral commission, he's the one who controls the judiciary, he's, he's basically in charge of everything. People, the, the opposition is not in for this scientific election, but then if the electoral commission has decided so, then there is an option for opposition. Hmm. All right, uh, Jackson, before I let you go, you, Uganda has experienced the highest spike in violent disorder, you know, the country has faced in over a decade. Um, much of this also involved instances in which the state targeted civilians, like the arrest and torture of uh, opposition uh, member of parliament um, known as uh, Bobby Wine, that's uh, Robert, in 2018. Will this not cause voters apathy? You know, as I told you earlier, the role of the army in the elections here in Uganda is very paramount. And so the state uses the army to, you know, entrench itself. And so we don't expect any, anything different from the previous elections. You, you've seen violence before. We haven't seen any confirmation that we, we won't have violence. But then, this is the nature of our elections. As I told you earlier, the president entrenches himself through the military, mm. through the police and other security agencies. So we expect him to do the same. But then, uh, when you see Honorable Chagrani trying to, you know, use some kind of violent ways, it's because it's the only option available. Mm. I told you these people never wanted scientific election, but then the state dictated that we must have a scientific election. And from my look of things, the opposition will kind of defy this and organize some rallies. And so we expect uh, uh, violence in this election. But then, uh, again, with Honorable Chagulani, he motivates young people. And controlling young people, you know, controlling that excitement, stopping them from, you know, seeing him, I don't think the state will be able to, you know, do so. Mm -hmm. But then I'm very sure they will deploy, there will be violence and we don't expect a peaceful election in 2021. Oh, that's quite unfortunate to say that you don't expect a peaceful election in 2021. Jackson, thank you so very much for your time. Do keep safe out there as well. Thank you, Amaka.